right, everyone. Good afternoon. This is Eve with Top Software. Uh, today's office hours is on scheduling your reoccurring journal entries and the things you can do with that. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right. So today's agenda, we're going to look at reoccurring uh, journal entries, the scheduling advantages. We're also going to set up a scheduled reoccurring journal entry. We're going to go over editing and posting, and then we'll get on with our live demo. So that's what we're going to go over today. There's a couple of new things going on with journal entries. I don't know if any of you have seen the latest updates, but I'll, I'll touch on those as well. So the advantages of scheduling your reoccurring journal entries is you only have to enter it that one time. So if this is something that's monthly or, or you know, bi-weekly that you have to do, uh, you just set it up once and it can post on its own. You have the choice to have it auto post or not. Um, and so because it's being posted so often, our number two advantage is to ensure the correct account is always being used. So when you set this up and it's on a schedule, there's no getting the wrong account because the account is already set up and it is the correct account. And number three, it can be updated easily. So if you've done it and you have a change to your GL accounts, or the scheduling, you can easily change that. All right, let's talk about uh, the setup of scheduled recurring journal entries. To get there in your TOPS 1, you're gonna go to General Ledger in the menu on the left. And from the menu on the left, you're gonna click on Journal Entries. And in the Journal Entries screen, you're gonna click on Actions at the top right and say New Journal Entry. And this should be pretty familiar to any of you doing a journal entry. It's the same as doing a regular journal entry, except for in our case, we're going to schedule it. And to schedule it, you're gonna choose the scheduling dropdown to uh, choose the automation selection of your choice. So on the right side, it's going to say this time only, but if you click the drop down, you have two choices. You can schedule, which is accrue and notify me, or you can automate, which will automatically post this transaction. So those are the two choices. Uh, if it, you want it to automatically post, it will just simply post. If you want to be able to go in and look at that before it posts, you can accrue and notify me. Now in the past, the accrue and notify was good to use because if you needed to edit the journal entry prior to posting, you could do that. With the new changes, the update to the software now, not only can you delete a journal entry, but you can also edit it after posting. So you might as well just automate and tell it to automatically post because you can always go back and edit that posted journal entry, which is a wonderful, wonderful change thanks to our development team. Um, so we're going to talk about setting up the journal entry with a reference and description. So when you're setting up this journal entry, there's a couple things it's gonna ask for. Of course, the post date is the date what you want it to post. Uh, the reference is going to be what kind of journal entry is it? Uh, so the reference is what kind, is it a reclass, is it an adjustment, is it a beginning balance, is it uh, something to, to balance an entry, what kind of entry is it? But the description is much more. Um, the description is exactly what the journal entry is for, and you want to fill that in so that it's easy to identify at a later time. And I always tell people, set up your description so that if an auditor was to look at it a year from now, they wouldn't have to ask what it was for. They would know exactly what it was for. Uh, so with no question. So always put in your reference and description with great detail. Now I know that the spaces look small, but I'm here to tell you I've gotten in a huge amount of wording in there, several paragraphs, and it takes it. So don't think you don't have enough room to put in the reason. Then at the bottom, you have your line items. You have your account number that you put in, the debit or credit account. You click the plus symbol, and it will auto-populate that reference and description for you, and then you fill it in. Now on the second uh, part here is then you're going to tell it when you want it to be scheduled. So the first on the first page, let's go back on the first page where you say accrue and notify me or automatically post that will populate this page, the page where you set up uh, the time and dates and 
things that you want it to schedule. So first you're going to add a job name. This is something new from our development department that everyone has asked for when they make those reoccurring journal entries and it goes to the automated screen. The automated screen was not detailed enough to know what kind of entry that was. So now you have a job name and I'll show you that later. The job name is what will show up in the automation screen. So you know exactly what reoccurring job that is, and you don't have to pop it open and open it. So any of you that are have dealt with the, the automation screen, you know that when you make those reoccurring journal entries, they, you couldn't tell them apart in the past, and now the job name allows for that, which is super duper wonderful. I've, I've held to deal with that myself. So you put the job name in, and then you select the drop down to choose the frequency according to how often you want it to automate. So in this case, on screen, we have it as monthly. But if you were to click that drop down, it would show daily, hourly, quarterly, yearly, however often that you need it to run. Uh, then you're also going to have the start date is the date the first time it's going to post. Things to know about the start date and start time. It cannot be in the past. It has to be today, in the future, at least 15 minutes in the future. If it's in the past, even this morning, that's the past, the job will not run, it will fail. So always start date, start time in the future, at least 15 minutes. Now on the right hand side, we have the permitted days. When you go in, it will not default to Saturday and Sunday. You want to click on those and turn those on. When they're white, they're off. When they're blue, they're on. You're going to want to turn on those Saturday and Sunday days simply because if you don't and the job falls on a Saturday or Sunday, it will fail. So you don't want it to do that. You want it to actually post if it's on a Saturday and Sunday, if this is a reoccurring job, to stay on the date that you wanted. So you want to go ahead and turn those on. An end date and an end time are not required. Uh, you don't have to have those, but they are there in case you want to fill those in. Uh, now, after the information has been entered, you click automate at the top right hand corner. And when you click automate, that will save the job. Uh, this job will now be viewable in the automation area and the automation areas in the menu bar on the left at the bottom next to the admin button. There's admin and, it, and automation. Uh, the job will also be listed in the reoccurring entries tab in the journal entries area. So if you go to GL journal entries on the right hand side, you have reoccurring entries and you will see that if you click on reoccurring entries, it will take you to the automation screen and you'll be able to see your reoccurring journal entries. So that's pretty nice. So once it's automated, uh, let's talk about what it looks like. There it is at the top of our screen, editing and posting at the top is the automation screen. And remember how I told you that before you couldn't tell your journal entries apart. Now you can see the job name on screen. This test will, uh, this will test how to automate automatically post and this one is bank adjust test eve started 1118 so both of these are some that i did just the other day at on 1118 to prepare for this webinar and the two different types one of them is an automatic post and the other one is um, the one that i set up to notify accrue and notify and not automatically post so i did the two and then just below that you'll see my screen and what it looked like so in your gl and then journal entry screen you'll notice here that you have the different activity and the ones that are automatically posted see they're already posted they're the gray color but the ones that i told to accrue and notify me are green. Green means accrued. Green means not posted. Any part of TOPS 1, if you're in your activity feed and you see green, green is not posted, not sent, not posted, not done. So make sure that anything that's green is either deleted or posted or whatever you need to do with it. So if you needed to edit one of those journal entries, you would simply click on the GL number, GL1562, GL1563, whichever one you need to edit, and then there it would be. Now here it is when you open that journal entry. This happens to be a posted one, but I just wanted to show you at the top right hand corner, even though it's posted in the actions button, you now have the option to edit. So at the top right hand corner, look at that automation drop down, 
Edit is now an option. Delete is still there, so you could delete a journal entry if you have deletability, but edit is also an option. So those of you that are thinking, hmm, maybe I don't want my employees to be able to edit journal entries, you will want to consider looking at that in your users and passwords roles for your permissions for your user roles and maybe take that away if you don't want people to have it, but yay, it's there. Um, so that concludes my uh, webinar here, but I'm going to do a live uh, example of, of doing this scheduling one. So we just have a few minutes left, so I'm going to go over to do that. Um, if you just give me a minute here, take that out, and we're going to go into my tops office hours. So here is my live example. If we go to the left and we go to general ledger and from the drop down, go to journal entries. The journal entry screen will populate and there it is are my posted and accrue and notify me here. You can see accrue and notify me. It's green automatically posted. Those are, are gray and you can open those up and look at them. If you wanted to look at one of them to post it, let's see if it's an accrued one. You could click on that. Let's open in a new tab. And so you could click on that and there it is. You could edit that journal entry prior to posting. So let's say that you wanted to go ahead and edit it and then post it. You would simply click post and then it would post through. Now, what about this one? Let's say this one that I have that's accrued, I don't want to post it. I'm gonna go in there and I don't wanna post it. Notice there's not a post button. So you have, or there's not a delete button. Um, there's two options if you wanna delete it. Either A, you can post it and then delete it, or two, you can go to the community homepage. So I'm going to my office hours community homepage and you can look in your activity feed and see these accrued here. And you can go to actions and you can remove transactions. And from the community homepage, you can delete that from the delete button there. So that's one thing you can do to get rid of those accrued transactions. Uh, now let's go back to actually creating a journal entry um, with the scheduling. So general ledger journal entries, let's go to actions at the top right and say new journal entry. Uh, and we're gonna put today's date as our post date. Our reference is going to be test adjust. And our description is, this is my webinar, which I spelled this wrong. I S, there we go. Uh, I'm going to say I want to have it automatically post whenever it goes. I don't want to worry about it accruing it because I can always edit it later or delete it if I need to. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my bank account and I'm going to say, well, I need my bank account to be debited um, $5. And I'm going to click my plus symbol. And then I'm going to have my 9010 be my offset. And that's going to automatically populate the credit. I need to click the plus symbol again to make that journal entry. And then if I scroll down to the bottom, here's my scheduling. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on my permitted days, Saturday and Sunday. Then I'm going to go over here and name my job. This is my webinar. Auto post journal entry. Uh, I'm going to have it done. Let's see. Uh, it can be weekly, yearly, monthly. I'm going to have it go monthly starting today, but I can't do it right now. It has to be 15 minutes in the future. It's about to be 1.15, so I'll have it start at 1.30 p.m. Or perhaps I don't want it to start that. I want it to start tomorrow morning or maybe the first of the month. So we'll say the first of the month, and because it's in the future, not today, I can backdate the time. So here with the time, I'm gonna say, well, I start my day at nine in the morning. So I'm gonna have this journal entry run at six in the morning, so that when I come in at nine, it's definitely there. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. I don't have an end time and end date because I want this to go until I tell it to not run. And then at the top right, I'm going to click automate. When I click automate, it takes me back to my, my jobs that I have. This is my webinar auto post journal entry. There it is. Uh, at any point, if you don't want this to run, you can simply click the active and make it deactivated and it will be disappeared from the system. And at the top right here, show inactive, you can click that and reactivate it and then uh, go back in and it will be back. So you can turn them on and off easily. 
Okay, let's go back in now, uh, general ledger and journal entries, and let's edit one of the posted ones. So here the top one is posted. Now with a posted journal entry, again, you can go to actions, edit, and actually edit that journal entry and then save it again. So that's a wonderful new thing. Again, we don't give our developers enough credit for these wonderful additions that our clients have all asked for. Uh, all of you, I've heard it so many times, they wanna edit a journal entry, it would be so nice and now you've got it. So scheduling, editing, deleting, uh, new, basically new names on the job titles for automation for recurring journal entries. We've given you a lot. I know this, this webinar was supposed to be just about scheduling, but it, it had a few extra perks in there. So, uh, all right, Lisa's asked a question about when you pick a time for the journal entry to start. Any journal entry that you do should be within the time zone that you're in. Uh, we personally are in Florida and that's Eastern time, but if you are Pacific time, mountain time, central time, the journal entry should be following along with your computer's time, which should be attached to the time zone you're in. All right, you guys, thanks. Have a great day.